welcome to uh, Springfield Writers Group Fantasy Authors um, Night Four Tribute. So we have with us Lynn Lumsden Green. Hi, that's me. <laughs> and Caitlin McPherson. Hi. Oh, and, and just me. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually one of the authors tonight, so I'm not nervous at all. It really, it, I'm not used to being on this side of the, the whole equation, but um, I do have to just apologize. We did have scheduled for Cassandra Kelly to join us. She also has a fantasy story in this um, anthology, but she was unable to make it tonight. She sends her apologies. Um, and if we get time, I might do a little reading from her book, but we'll see how we go. All right, so thank you guys, firstly, so much for joining us tonight. I'm so excited to chat to you both. A pleasure. Always a pleasure. <laughs> All right, so we might get straight into it. Uh, okay, so for the first question we have, first, can you give us the title, firstly, of your stories and um, the elevator pitch slash brief synopsis of, of what your story is? Whoever wants to be brave enough and go first. Okay. Well, now my story has a Welsh name, which I actually can't pronounce, but it means tribute <laughs> in Welsh. And it's a story about a young woman who's an armourer who gets the opportunity to spend a year in fairyland, but because there's not allowed to be any iron in fairyland, she doesn't particularly want to live there anymore. So she's the first one to come back who's a tribute. And the person who's been sending the tributes has been saying, um, they, they just don't want to come back because it's fairyland. And when she comes back, the next person along who's also going to be a tribute is like, oh, yes, thank goodness. <laughs> yes, you can come back if you want to. But nobody else has wanted to come back but her because she, she wants to work with Iron. And the character is based on a Aki yep. because... She's a redhead who likes shy, shiny, sharp things. She and does, indeed. <laughs> and Caitlin, what about your story, Dylan? Uh, so mine's got a bit of a longer name. <laughs> uh, probably just as much of a tongue twister as the Welsh, but mine's called A Promise of Ash and Blood. And it's sort of like a Japanese-inspired fantasy that's m as much of a tragedy story as a villain origin story. Uh, so it kind of follows a half-human, half-kitsune, which is a nine-tailed fox in Japanese mythology. And oh. um, it sort of follows her uprising and, and downfall all in one. So, yeah, it's um, it's got samurai, it's got yakuza, um, monsters, magic, and lots of heartbreaking betrayal and a pretty cool, you know, amp up for a revenge story. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, oh that's, oh, these sound great. And, oh, I have to say, Lynn, I love that your story as well specifically is about Iron, with that being um, one of the books that Ike wrote. It was actually the first book that I ever wrote, I ever read of Ike's. So that's just, <laughs> just another little tidbit one there. Of the re one of the reasons it became the theme. Iron oh. steel, yeah, because you know, like it was meant to be a tribute, so yeah, no, I well. absolutely love it. I adore that, I adore that so much. We have Mandy here. Hey, Mandy, she says they both sound fantastic, they do, they sound amazing, guys. Um, oh, oh, I guess I should answer that question too. This is weird. <laughs> Okay, so my story is actually called Make a Wish. I originally wrote the very first version of this story nearly three years ago. And Ike was the first person who ever read it. She was the first person who gave, made me brave enough to share it with somebody. And she also helped me edit it. So my story is about um, sisters who are not related by blood and they've always known that growing up and the sister who is the adopted child 
is left with the house of the parents who have died and she is happier being outside in the garden than in the house itself and then we yeah we discover why she's there and all the history behind how she got there so yeah there we go <laughs> all right so uh, <laughs> um now you've kind of already answered this but i'm going to ask it anyway where did this idea come from do you want to go first caitlin yeah sure oh, Caitlin. Um, sorry <laughs> yeah go for it so my idea kind of started off i wanted to write an asian inspired beauty and the beast um Ooh. because there's just so much potential there and i always yeah i was just fascinated with beauty and beast retellings and then um as i got sort of digging down the plot rabbit hole um I realized that I was more interested in the backstory of the sorceress who actually curses the prince. And I wanted to find out why she wanted to curse the prince and why it had to be specifically love that broke the spell. So to me, I sort of felt, oh, hang on here. <laughs> she feels a bit jilted in my opinion. Like it sounds <laughs> like she's, you know, had the hots for him and then she's been rejected. And so now she's taken it out on him. And I was like, okay, so how can I do this? um in my own retelling and with um an asian setting so yeah that's kind of how it came about and um yeah similar to you neen and um, ike was one of the first people to read this story and um she yeah really helped me to develop it personally and um, make it a much better creation from what it first started as um yeah so i'm i'm really glad that for the tribute that i get to you know share that piece that we worked on together so yeah that's awesome that is beautiful. i love that oh, okay yeah. well yes i actually when we were told it was going to be a tribute anthology thought okay i want to write a story specifically that's a tribute to to our our friend so i looked at some of her book titles and then i looked at some of the other stuff that she'd written like her short stories and and that and then i came up with the not very clever inspiration of making mm -hmm. the main character basically another version of of her oh here we go <laughs> we've had some te te technical difficulties there we go, um, there we go. <laughs> so i wanted to make it about somebody who who she would be in another era lifestyle mm. place but there's actually fantasy land uh fairyland mm. so yeah and then knowing knowing her being such a down-to-earth person even though she would have loved the fantasy land she would have come back to to her family um and to her friends and to real life if given the opportunity so that's what i did i i, I even though it's not her her actually the character is actually it's own, her own little person she's got a lot of the same attributes that Arjun, sorry, Arky had so yeah and the best part for for me was it was very <sighs> soothing to to write like from that point of view because I'm not a very brave person or a very convincingly clever <laughs> one with swords and stuff so yeah, i had to really get into the mindset but yeah it was it was fun to write too that's awesome we also have alicia here hey alicia thanks for joining hi, us alicia. anyone else joining us feel free to drop any questions in or to say hi let us know where you're watching from and there's frankie <laughs> that's hi, awesome, frankie Lynn. i love it <laughs> oh that's brilliant happy I belated birthday frankie <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it was his birthday on the weekend um and there lynn yes um i think you're brave lynn from alicia me too when bravery is very 
very oh i can't even think of the word you can be brave in so many different ways it's not thank like, you it's be, that's it yeah. yes there are so many ways to be brave um, thank only you guys. Brave because you're bold you're out there yes. and you're all proud of it so love absolutely it. um okay so my story make a wish actually came Please. from what was that i just got off with a cup of tea oh, sorry it's all right, right. <laughs> I was like, sorry, did I do something? No, cool. No, awesome. No. <laughs> so my story make a wish actually came from um it came from my love of just the balance of good and evil and the whole idea that no one is entirely good and no one is entirely evil. And we all have that potential and it's our choices that actually define where we fall on that spectrum. So that's where it came from. And, of course, I said it in a fun um, urban fantasy setting because that seems to be my jam. So, yeah, <laughs> that's where it all originally came from. And it became such a better piece of work that I am so proud of mm -hmm. having had that one-on-one -on -one, um, time with Ike and able to have her share her expertise with me and she was so gracious and generous and she motivated me to make it better. Um, and with those skills, I feel like I became better after that story. Firstly, I was able to share my writing with other people and just the things I learned from doing that carried on to future writing. So, yeah. <laughs> um, now... Our beautiful friend did pass away. For anyone who isn't actually aware of this, she passed away in January um, from cancer and she was our fearless leader for our group, for the Springfield Writers Group, and she got us so motivated and strengthened and just had skilled. passion. Yes, and skilled and had such passion that her passing has affected us all in different ways, but affected us deeply. Thank you. Um, so, Caitlin, do you have a favourite memory or piece of advice that you would like to share? Uh, it was really hard to narrow down this one um, <laughs> because there was just way too much. Um, she taught me a lot about writing and about life, but I think one of the things that's going to always stick with me personally is um, when she said, just go out there and kick ass. And yes. I think it was so inspiring because she said it. Like if anyone else had have said that, it would have been like, yeah, cool, okay. But yeah. because someone <laughs> as kick ass as Ike encouraged me to be just as kick ass, I was like, you know what? Yes, I can be inspired yes. by this. I can do it. I can, you know, follow in her footsteps. And I think that was one of the beautiful things about her is that she would reach down and just, it didn't matter what your skill level was. It doesn't matter where you were in life. She always had the time for you and she always made the time and effort to make you feel um, like you could do anything. And that is such an amazing skill and the world is um, definitely going to be missing that. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can all take something from that and, and encourage each other because I know that that's what she would have wanted. So, yeah. Um, Alicia's just saying here, Ike did have, did have kick-ass magic powers. <laughs> magic powers. She, she did. She really did. 100%. Lynn, what about you, my darling? This was a present that Arjun gave me when she was passing, uh, dying. As you can see, it's this absolutely glorious tiara so that I would remember that I'm always the queen of writing. Oh, and... The one thing that she encouraged me was to just keep my own voice. Mm. She said, never try to copy anybody else. She said, because you've really got something to say that's unique. And that was her. She had something to say that was unique. And she believed that everybody should be as authentic themselves as what they could possibly be. Mm. So when I wear it, I wear it upside down because that's really <laughs> the best. But by the same token, yeah, um, she she was very good at inspiring people suited that person's personality because yes. I'm 
the, probably the least confident of all the people in our group when it comes to um, she was the one that inspired sending off a hundred things in a year. She was the one that inspired to write a story every week for a year so that I'd have 52 stories that some of them would be shit, but some of them would have to be good because in 52 of them, there's got to be some good ones. So the thing I think that she did the most for me was just support me with her friendship. Even when she was knew she was past going to die and she had such limited time she took time out of her to to sit with me and have coffee and chat and that's a gift that I'm going to treasure for the rest of my life absolutely Frankie says that's beautiful and so does Alicia and it is Lynn it's beautiful these memories that we have of of Ike um yeah Okay. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> so, um, I, um, I did not know Ike as long as both of you did, but I feel like in the three years that I did know her, um, she absolutely just helped me shift my mindsets um, more than I think even she was aware of um she had a power to make me feel seen and accepted for who i was um and that was something that she did with such seeming effortlessness that it was so natural for her to embrace people for who they were to accept them for who they were and if anything that's something that her doing has been very much a role model for me. I have lots of memories of spending time with her and talking to her and laughing with her. But what I, yeah, I, I want to share is that just that her role modeling in her life was for me the most impactful thing. The things that she did that she did, whether she knew anyone was watching or not, whether she got praise for it or not. She did it to help others. And that's what I would love. I would love in 10 years to be able to look back and say, I'm proud of having emulated those same qualities. So I think that's what, and I'm gonna stop being sappy now. <laughs> because she'd be like, no, get on with it. Don't be sad, move on. Yeah, don't be don't sad. Do it. Don't you know, go do it, grab the world and, and, and just shake it, sh shake it for everything you have. And that's what I just, I love, I love. Um, so moving on to natural writing, um, <laughs> what are we all working on at the moment? Caitlin, are you working <laughs> on anything at the moment? Yeah, so I'm working on um, a full manuscript this time rather than just a short story. And um, I'm working on um, the bigger piece that my short story, A Promise of Ash and Blood, goes with. So, my, yeah, so characters that are in this short story are in the main story and it kind of helps to weave things in a bit and I can't really give away too much without spoiling the <laughs> all the bigger picture but yeah, um, yeah so that's that's currently so, my work in progress right so what we need to do there is just say so if that intrigues you go buy the book it's now out there we go guys I'm sorry I meant to put that up earlier absolutely and if you want to keep track of Caitlin to find out um, where, how she's going on that MS or poke her a little bit and say, come on, come on, keep going. You're rocking it. <laughs> um, you can follow Caitlin here at her website. Excellent. Now, Lynn, what are you working on? A million pieces that you're working on, my dear. Yeah, I'm just about to say, uh, got back into doing some flash fictions and sending them off again because I haven't done that for a while. Um, and now I'm getting back into my train book, which has been not looked at for over a year and a half. So the train book, it's interesting going back and reading it because 
some bits I think, oh, that's terrible. But then there's other bits where I'm going, hey, yes, this really works. Good o. So yeah, and yeah, and then I also have the steampunk novel that I've been trying to get finished now for eight years. It keeps that's okay. Calling. You'll get there. No one's steady wins the race. <laughs> oh, yes. I know. But at the same time. Can, yeah, come on, hurry up and finish it, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, I also have, I'm writing a chat book. It's just a small one called The Shape of a Knife. And guess guess who inspired that one? <laughs> so when I've finished that chat book, I'm hoping to send that off to Brain Jar Press, which is a Brisbane publishing company. And if they say oh, no, excellent. then it's just going to be sent to everybody. As always. Excellent. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Oh, oh by it. the way, I'm... can I can I do yes. a quick Brain Jar Press yes. also does a lot of how to write chat books by people that who are Australian authors. Oh, excellent. And I would recommend going and, and looking at their what they've got to offer. Oh, excellent. Who was that? Sorry? Brain Jar Press. Brain Jar Press. Oh, like that a, fun. think of a brain in a jar. And you yep. pretty much. Because <laughs> that's what we all want to think about. That's all what we all Absolutely. are. All right. Is a, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've just noticed, sorry, Alicia, I didn't see these comments earlier. She said, yay, urban, fa urban fantasy, you go mean. I totally missed that. And I can't wait for the longer version of your story, Caitlin. Same here. Yeah, I know. It sounds amazing. Awesome. So you've been working on all of those, Lynn. And for anyone wanting to keep track of Lynn, this is her amazing website, um, cogpunksteamscribe.wordpress.com. Make sure you go and follow it and you'll be able to keep up to date with her plethora of stories going out there i love that you're getting back into the um flash fiction lynn that's awesome i'm gonna take over the world one day <laughs> yes yes every anthology will have a lynn Lumsden green story <laughs> i'll be trying oh i love it that's fantastic <laughs> here we go again oh, and she's gone again <laughs> and i'm back oh, there we go <laughs> um all right, I'm currently working on, I'm, I'm, I'm in some sort of different places in a few um, different projects. So I have a project called The Void. I'm not sure if that will remain the title, but that's currently with a publisher at the moment, hoping to get feedback and a publishing date on that because it has been accepted um, on edits and that type of stuff, um, hopefully by the end of the year. I'll know roughly when that might be coming out. I am also currently working on, so yeah, that's in like the second stage of that one. The next one I'm working on is, I've almost finished. Um, it's a novella and it will be, it's a uh, dystope, yeah, post-apocalyptic uh, urban fantasy again, because Ooh, is like it, I said, is that the is the kind of Yes, gargoyles. Yes. Gargoyles. <laughs> it's really good. Yes. So that one is nearly ready to um put aside and wait for beta reading. Do and I, can then... I be a beta reader? Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Putting my hand up. <laughs> Absolutely. And then with NaNoWriMo starting in just a few days, I will be working on the sequel. This is like the first official kind of announcement. The sequel for Cold as Hell, which is my Yay. debut. <laughs> and if anyone's interested, there's there, there's me. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, it's so yeah. exciting. It is. It's um. It, it's good. It's been a very intense year, but I really appreciate you guys coming and chatting with me today. Now. <sighs> Would you guys like me to do a reading? Just a small reading. If you want, I'm happy to help out as well. So Yay! Okay, Caitlin, you go first. Right. And thank um, you, Lucia, and thank you, Mon. <laughs> so how much do you want me to read? Maybe just just a couple um cha uh, chapters, far out. Just a couple paragraphs. So me sure. and Lynn 
we'll bugger off so you can have all the screen and just holler <laughs> when you're ready for us to come back. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> okay. Best place to start is from the beginning, right? So, Kazmi had always known that she was born different. Even without her mother's dark whispers of forest spirits, yokai and fox magic, she'd understood that she was not quite human. So it really wasn't a surprise she'd ended up in the bowels of the fortress dungeon, beaten and bruised, her kimono covered in ash and blood as she awaited her judgment. Something in the corner of her cell scurried towards her, paused, and then scuttled away. Likely another rat. It was impossible to tell in the pitch black, but her keen hearing and sense of smell was rarely mistaken. How long had it been down here? It could have been hours, maybe a day or two. She didn't care anymore. Further up the hall, whimpers echoed off the cold stone. Someone had been quietly pleading for food since Kazmi had awoken. More than once she called out to them through the, <laughs> through the darkness, but there was never anything more than a strangled moan in reply. Kazumi had fallen silent after that. Her throat was raw and dried out from inhaling smoke during the fire. She'd given up groping blindly in the dark for the water bucket that should have been supplied. Apparently her jailers had neglected to give her one. She shouldn't have been surprised, yet a small part of her was. Mama was right, she grasped between gritted teeth. No matter how hard she tried to lead a normal existence, how hard she tried to fit in, Kazumi would never truly be one of them. It didn't matter that she'd been a dutiful daughter or a loving wife. In the end, all they saw was a creature that was less than human, a monster. So, a little sample there. Woo! Wow. Oh, um, Clancy. Hi, Clancy. Thanks for joining us. She said, read, read all of it. Um, no, <laughs> that's why you need to go and find a book. Buy <laughs> it. <laughs> um yeah that's brilliant well done caitlin that's gorgeous and monica said i'm so excited it is it's so exciting i can't wait to get my hard copy of it um, i know i'm still waiting to <laughs> i know i know i'm like i just want to touch it and feel it um yeah caress it lovingly yes yes <laughs> if you guys are interested springboard writers group actually have three other anthologies these ones have actually all been edited by Ike herself that was the first year and the second year and the third year um so yes feel free to go look them up as well um Franklin and says, I'm in all three of them <laughs> yay <laughs> all four now <laughs> yay um that's awesome Caitlin thank you and Frankie I haven't read your story yet. So yeah. You will now. now. You've, you've <laughs> got the start of it now, Mon. <laughs> that was brilliant. Um, all right. I'll, I'll, I'm going to kick you guys out and I'll do a little reading and then I'll bring us back in and we'll see if there's any questions in the comments. Okay. Okay. So this story is called Make a Wish. And even though Caitlin was clever and said, starting from the start. I'm actually not going to start from the start because then I'll have to read way too much. Um, so I will. Uh, now, of course, I've lost it. Um, all right. <clears throat> so this is actually the second page. We've uh, met Stella and she's in the garden. Like I explained earlier, she prefers the garden to the house. So she's in the garden. It was the only place she had ever been safe. The only place during childhood where Teresa forgot to torment Stella about her black hair and blacker eyes. The one place where the reminder of being adopted wasn't apparent in every photo her parents displayed around their home. The difference between the sisters was night and day. Behind her, the house loomed, paint peeling and boards rotting. One of the windows was, melded, was mended with multi coloured strips of plywood, all different shades. It reminded Stella of a pirate patch covering the eye of a grisly-faced villain. The doorbell chimed, echoing around the minimal furniture and dust inside, before floating out to the backyard. Stella's smile faltered. Ignoring the visitor, she took a deep, intoxicating breath of the morning air. She heard the telltale squeak of the gate 
and her shoulders tensed. She crossed her legs up into the seat of her chair and sat in a lotus position. Stella, Teresa's voice was harsh and demanding as usual. Stella sighed, closing her eyes. Hello, Teresa. Why bother having a doorbell if you refuse to answer it? Teresa strode around the garden, feet stomping down blades of grass. If she were a dog, she would be cocking her leg and marking territory. She plucked flowers and leaves indiscriminately, squashing them between her fingertips and sniffing at the results. The petals fell, discarded and broken. You could make nice perfume out of these, better than them falling to rot. Stella ground her teeth and waited, feeling the sting of each tiny death. The cries of pain made her eyes water as they were brutalised. Teresa blew out a breath and collapsed into the other lawn chair, long, slender limbs spilling over the sides. And that's all you get. <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah, so that's um, that's part of Make-A-Wish. And, yeah, Stella and her sister Teresa and their fun, lovely relationship. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks, Mon. Mon says, I read Neen's story when it was still a reader magnet and loved it then. Has it changed much for the anthology? It was too long for the anthology. The word count was um, somewhat too long. So it did get cut down a little bit, but nothing major, just some of the descriptions um, and some of the time between Teresa's visits was cut down a bit. So that's all. If you do want to um, read the fuller version, it is on a free read for my um, newsletter if anyone's interested. Um, but I do like this version as well. It's more compact and succinct. So either is great, either way. <laughs> um, yes. Um, Monica, Monica, I love you, woman. You're awesome. I just finished Cassandra's The Hat and I'm up to Lynn now. So Cassandra um, unfortunately couldn't come here, but yes. Um, hers is the first story in the fantasy section of tribute so yay um i don't think we have any other questions thank you my dear sounds great mean <laughs> um that's the the other half um <laughs> so thank you guys so much for coming thank you for having me it was great to share <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm i'm so glad you could join us and I will see you all guys soon. And thanks, everyone, for showing up. Um, and, again, just before we head off, if you are interested in finding your own copy of this amazing anthology, that's where you can go and purchase it. Um, I will also put the links in the comments for the websites. So if anyone wants to go clicky, clicky, then they can do that without having to type it all in. All right, so thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to, to have a little chat. Absolutely. I love it. It's been fabulous. <laughs> I was looking forward to it all week. Aww. Thank you. All right, we better thanks, go. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.